Well, good morning. We're here at the arena uh, with this aggressor and the complaint from the customer is a uh, squealing noise when operating. So just a little background on the machine. Let's see how many hours. We got 53 hours, 53.6 to be exact. So this will continuously flash when the machine's idle and being idle, the red light's on, seat switch activated, unit's ready to go. So some observations um, as I came to the, come to the machine to take a look, um, just some suggestions. Notice that uh, the gasket has come off this recovery lid. Um, that just presses on. We gotta make sure that that's on there firmly. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, pressing it back in like this. So we wanna keep the lid open and we also want to ensure that this has been rinsed out, not just emptied out, rinsed out, uh, because that's gonna prevent, uh, you know, it's actually gonna help deliver the water when you have to uh, release it when you're done from the recovery drain hose. Um, this should be cleaned out better. This, I could get, like I said, it should be open just to air out. We want to air the vacuum out as much as possible. Now, another issue is the squeegee. The squeegee should come off the machine and there's a little notch in here to uh, store it. Actually, it's it'll be mounted to the tank to dry. So it, this has to be inspected. The blades have to be inspected. Um, I would say daily. You want to clear any obstructions that you may see. This is a better look of that notch, but I will show in another part of the video how it should look. Now, the other thing is, um, I want to apologize for the lighting. Um, right now, um, what I'll use is this. Now, it's nice to remove this, but actually it's still dirty. We need to make sure that's completely clean. Now, there's only one brush. Okay, there's actually supposed to be two. The front one has not come out for some reason. Also inside here, this has to be cleaned. There's still debris in there. Okay, I don't know what reason why they left the other brush in there, but we'll find out. The front brush is out. I was able to get that out, but there's debris that's still caught up in here. The best time to clean this debris is when it's still wet after they're done. And I still, and I see all kinds of uh, debris stuck in the back. Um, I don't expect many people to get that, but this stuff that's gonna fall the next time they fired up this machine, see how this stuff is just kind of taking you inside here to take a better look, but you know, it can actually be cleaned out. So see all this debris, this is gonna cause problems. The bearings are not gonna be able to dry naturally. So, again, when it's wet is the best time to actually tackle that. Also, this needs to be cleaned up. When it's wet, it's easier to clean. Um, here's the other back side of this. And we're already getting rust on here. So, um, what I'm gonna actually do is go into these covers here where the belts are and check for tightness. Um, Another thing that could be causing it is running the heavy pressure constantly. So we wanna avoid that at all costs. Okay, just a quick look at the batteries, AGM. That's what we wanna see, maintenance free. So, front motor. There's a solution filter. They just have to uh, close it off with this handle right here. Hopefully they're doing that. This is the handle that shuts off the water supply. And then you can check that. I don't know if they're using detergents, but um, another thing is getting to blow debris off the deck with an air compressor quite possibly. That might be helpful. Um, I'm not sure if they are using chemical, but if there is cloudiness like I see, 
that means uh, we're gonna have some issues down the road inside the uh, tank. We wanna make sure that um, we evacuate and rinse out the tank periodically. Chemical will start decaying after 24 hours. Okay, onto the squeegee. So blades have been rotated on the bottom side. Also, there's some debris here. Generally fairly clean. Um, but we do actually would probably want to flip these and then have a spare set of blades ready. They may have already, nope. I'm not sure if they have actually flipped them completely 360 degrees here. Or I'm sorry, 180, but they got debris stuck in there. So this is how we mount it in that notch. And you just lay the squeegee hose. Oh, looks like we got damage to the hose already. That's uh, either it's been repaired because typically I don't see this kind of uh, cloth type of adhesive on this. I'll have to ask, but it looks like there has been some damage. I'm not positive. So. Getting ready for the wet test and I just want to see what settings are set at. So I'm going to go ahead and um, see what we got here. Um, now we got it set at one. It doesn't show up good on camera, but it's set for one. What we want to avoid is two and three. So it's never going to be where you have to scrub that aggressively with the cylindrical to where you have it at three. You can, but it's not advantageous because you're putting too much pressure down on the brush and um, it's going to make the belt slip like that. So we're back at one again and uh, water's ready to go. So we're going to do a quick wet test. Now, the only other thing I can think of a, a noise is uh, going up a transition or a ramp to clean. It's always suggested you uh, go side by side, either up or down a ramp, not straight up. The initial shock is not going to be great. Now I'm going to check the deflection of the blades. Looks pretty good. So just keeping this at one, there's plenty of pressure on the deck and the bristles are doing what they're supposed to effectively. You don't want to crush the bristles down because you're really not extracting any dirt whatsoever from your surface. But there are aggressive types of um, cleaning, indeed, there are. But you don't wanna, you wanna scrub without using a squeegee. I'm just picking up some stuff here. Now I did dust mop, so I'm leaving maybe some streaks behind here. Um, we also could have some issues with the blades. That's another wear item. You should keep a spare set of squeegee blades and skirt blades. They're spring loaded. I'm not much of an operator, but we're definitely not hearing the squeaks. But there is a lot of wear on the, uh, I'm sorry, the belt. I saw a lot of belt debris. See, you can see I didn't dust mop, so it caught some debris. You come and pick this stuff up here. Uh, 
and we'll call it. Now, another thing I like to do upon completion is the uh, opening the recovery lid and let the vac motor run by itself. That'll dry out the impeller of the uh, vac motor. Here's some of the debris that came off the deck. And I think at the end of the video, I'll plug in that stuff here. I mean, that came off the inside of the deck. That's going to cause problems, especially when you're trying to install the brushes and you got this build up in here. It's just a matter of taking some time to reach in while it's wet and clean the rest of that up. So, all right, job well done. Okay, this is the filter for the back motor. And as you can probably see, we got a warped lid. Don't know what may have caused that. It's hard to say, but it's gonna have a problem sealing properly. So I would suggest replacing that as well.